بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم کلاس آئی ویلکم یو ٹو انگلش گریڈ ایٹ ویڈیو لیسنس آئی ایم یور انسٹرکٹر ضیا حمید آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل اینڈ یو آر آل ریڈی اینڈ سیٹ ٹو لرن سم تھنگ نیو ناؤ وی آر ڈیلنگ ود فار گریڈ ایٹ ود یونٹ نمبر تھری وچ از اے پوم دا ٹائٹل از ڈونٹ کوٹ تو دس ول بی آور لیکچر نمبر فور بی ود دا کمپیٹنسی آف ریڈنگ اینڈ کریٹیکل تھنکنگ ناؤ Let's talk about our student's learning outcome. So our SLO is evaluate the literary techniques, for example, music or sound, imagery or visual effects, type of vocabulary and language structure used in written and visual texts to achieve a variety of purposes. So, But dear learners, we will be looking at some literary techniques and specifically poetic techniques and we will be covering all these when they are used in music or sound, imagery, visual effects and the type of vocabulary with the language stru structure both in the written and visual text. So this is our student's learning outcome. for this video lesson here is a vertical linkage of this slo with the previous grade that you have already covered now moving on let's do a very quick brainstorming session um, for this brainstorming activity you have a question that how does the music or sound affect the mood or tone of the visual text so what do you think about this pause the video think for a moment that when you are looking at texts that are showing some visual to you how does the musicality or the sound of it affects the overall mood and tone of the visual um, of the visual text or anything that is written whether it's poetry or any other written text so the tone and the sound really matters think about it and recall any poem that you have uh, recently read talk about uh, talk image that comes in your my, my, uh, mind the sound and the visual that you perceive while reading it now after this quick brainstorming session let's talk about some poetic techniques we are specifically dealing with uh, poetic techniques in literary techniques there are a lot of others also they are used in prose and different kind of prose so since we are dealing with a poem as the main lesson we will be looking at the poetic techniques now we have divided this lecture into different parts first one is the introduction then the sound of words the sound the music that it, the word produces and the meaning of words followed by the arrangement of words which we call language structure and then the imagery of words the visual image that comes in your mind when you are reading such texts so let's get started with number 1 which is our introduction now poets are limited in the materials they can use in creating their work all they have are words to express ideas and emotions these words need to be right on several levels at once let's see so the poet they must sound right to the listener as they are read out aloud so here comes our sound that how does the poem actually sounds to the reader next one is they must have a meaning which is clear and thought provoking and then they must be arranged in a way that is easy to follow but also assist the readers understanding so the arrangement for uh, in this case in poetry we know that poems are arranged in different verses and different stanzas so arrangement is very important then they must encourage deep thoughts or emotions while appearing simple and self contained so these are all the things that a poet needs to see and if you want to write poetry 
you will follow all these things mentioned. So, the trick is to play with words and use them correctly, whether it's to show image or using the correct language structure, the uh, proper arrangement of the text of uh, such poems. Now, let's talk about the second thing, which is sound of words. Now, certain words can be selected and grouped together to achieve specific effects. When we hear them, the sounds that are created might sound pleasing or soothing, clever or rhythmic, or harsh and uncomfortable to hear. The following poetic devices can affect the way a poem sounds when read aloud. It's important to remember that these deliberate arrangements of words can convey a particular sense of mood, atmosphere, or emotion. So, here we see that the words are grouped together to achieve specific effects. Now, these effects are perceived by the reader and um, the poem leaves a big impact on the reader of the poem. The sounds that are created might be soothing and very uh, interesting to you, it can be harsh also. Furthermore, they have a rhythm and we know that poems are best learned and best uh, acquired when they are read aloud. So, poems have musicality and sounds. Now, to create that uh, sound effect, we have some poetic devices that we use in poems. Let's talk about all these. Number one is alliteration. So, my dear learners, if you remember, alliteration is repeated consonant sounds at the beginning of words placed near each other or next to each other. For example, in this sentence, Peter Piper picked a peck of peckled peppers. You can hear the consonant P over and again. So, here this verse or this sentence is full of alliteration because the same consonant sound is being repeated over and again and they are very close to one another. Another example is Slim pinioned swallows sweep and pass the sound of s is coming again and again so the consonant s the sound is being repeated this is also an example of alliteration the barbarians broke through the barricade so all these are the consonants that are the same consonant that is being repeated again and again so this gives us a effect and it gives a sound, a particular sound that will leave an effect and they are easy to remember also. Now, let us talk about another one regarding sounds and the musicality which creates a visual effect to the reader. Let us talk about assonance. So, assonance are repeated vowel sounds. In words, placed near each other usually on the same or adjacent lines. So, unlike uh, alliteration where we used the same consonant sound again and again, here we repeat the vowel sounds. For example, I feel stressed and restless. You can see the vowel sounds are coming again and again. So, when you say it and when you read this aloud, you can feel assonance and the repetition of the vowel sounds again and again. The, do, the dapper lad chatted to the other happy chap. So, the sound of A is being repeated over here. Then, Johnny went here and there and everywhere. So, you can see a rhythm, a musicality, a particular sound that is coming. This is also an example. And lastly, 
go slow over the road to nowhere. Here, the sound O is being repeated, which is, of course, a vowel sound. So, alliteration and assonance, they are very good uh, when you want to create a sound that pleases the reader. Now, let's talk about uh, another one, which is onomatopoeia. It gives us the sounds that when we read them, we feel like that we actually heard the environment, the sounds that the poem is, descri uh, is describing. So, onomatopoeia are words that imitate the natural sound of the thing they describe. So, since we are only reading the poem and not seeing anything in front of us, so onomatopoeia targets our hearing and it gives us the sound of the natural environment and natural, natural surrounding. For example, the clank of the pots and pans and woke the baby. So the clank is when the pot or pan or something like these materials fall they give a sound clank. So, this is an example of onomatopoeia. The wolves howled at the moon. So, this is an onomatopoeia. It gives the sound of the wolves because wolves, they howl. They make a sound similarly to the sound of howl. Zoom went the race car as it sped past the finish line. So, zoom is also an onomatopoeia. The bacon sizzled in the pan. So, the sizzling is also an onomatopoeia. So, all these kind of words that give us the sound of any uh, thing that is uh, around your surrounding or in the natural environment, it gives us the uh, ability to actually hear what the is trying to say. Let's talk about repetition. Maria learners must have read so many poems where there are repeated words, repeated verses that are coming again and again. So, in poetry, a literary technique is to use the repetition of words or sounds. So, the purposeful reuse of words and phrases to create emphasis for something that is important or convey a particular effect. So, this thing, this literary and poetic technique also creates an effect for the reader. I will not brush my hair, I will not wear a dress and I will not clean my room. This is a sentence. So, you can see that all these things, these words are being repeated to show emphasis of the writer or the poet. We have so much stuff but still buy more stuff than need strong units to store all the stuff. So, the word stuff is being repeated thrice. So, similarly in poems, we can see that so many different lines are after every three or four words or every second verse, the same verse which is very important and resonant it's to the theme of the poetry, it comes again and again because the writer or the poet wants to show emphasis on a particular thing. Now, let's talk about rhythm. Rhythm is when words are arranged according to stressed and unstressed syllables so that they can make a pattern or a beat. Verses might contain a certain cumber of syllables to create this pattern. Rhythm helps to distinguish poetry from prose. You can usually hear rhythm if you hum the words instead of saying them. So, in poem, the poem is written in a way that if you hum it and if you uh, keep on humming it, you will realize that there is a certain pattern which we call rhythm in poetry. So, rhythm is also producing a sound effect to the reader. Let's talk about another thing 
related with is the rhyme scheme. Rhyme refers to words that have different beginning sounds but whose endings sound alike including the final vowel sound and everything following it. Rhyme scheme refers to the pattern established by the arrangement of rhymes in a stanza or poem, generally described by using letters of the alphabet to denote the recurrence of rhyming lines. Capital letters in the alphabetic uh, rhyme scheme are used for the repeating rhyming words at the end of each verse. So, rhyme have uh, something which is very common and uh, when we are using rhyme in our poem, let us say in our one of the stanza of a poem, we can clearly see a rhyme scheme. Most of the words at the end of the verse are rhyming together. So, this is what we call a rhyme scheme and we denote it by using the capital letters of the alphabet. So, when the first line is ending with a particular uh, sound and the next one is ending with the same sound, we can both name them A. And if they are not, the next one is not rhyming, we will call it B. So, in this way, when we are denoting this with alphabets, we find a rhyming scheme of any poem. So, this also creates a musicality and a very good sound effect to the reader. Let us talk about third thing uh, which we discussed in the contents, the meaning of words. And we know that a poet has to have a very meaningful uh, words in the poem to create maximum effect. A word can be carefully selected to convey a precise idea, but some words can carry several layers or depths of meaning at the same time. Poets can use these or combine them with other words for particular effects. Some techniques that can enhance the meaning of words are as follows, which we will be learning in the next slide. So, the meaning is carefully selected so that the message is being conveyed easily and effectively. So, poets use combine these meaningful words together to give a proper wholesome meaning to the poem and the reader will actually learn a lot about it when they are reading the poem. So, every word should be meaningful when we are writing a poem. Let us talk about another literary technique which is simile. So, simile creates a comparison between two things by using the words like or as. So, when we are comparing two things, we use these words like or as. And there is a likeness between these two different ideas or two different things. For example, the desert, the desert was as dry as a bone. Here, the thing desert is being compared with a bone. Now, desert is uh, not having water, it is dry, dry like a bone. So, here we use the word as to show a comparison. Her tempers were like an uncontrollable storm. Her temples are being compared with a storm because both of them have a likeness which is it their uncontrollable nature. You can read the uh, next examples by yourself. So, this is what we call simply and it produces a very good effect in the poem. Now, another one is metaphor, it is our poetic device, you can call it literary technique, poetic technique also. So, a metaphor creates a comparison by stating that one thing is another or does the actions of 
another. So, this is also like simile a comparison, but we are straight away doing the comparison without using the word like or as. For example, the wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. So, here this is a metaphor comparing the wind with torrent of darkness directly. Her fingers danced across the keyboard. So, here again the fingers are being compared, they are shown as dancing across the keyboard. So, this is also suggesting a direct metaphor. His stomach was a twisted storm of butterflies. So, again we made a comparison, but without, uh, um, I mean to say not directly, but uh, not indirectly, but rather directly, unlike simile, which compares two things with the words like or as. So, now next one is personification. Personification is about attributing or giving human characteristics or traits to an inanimate object, animal or abstract idea. Inanimate object means object that is of a non-living, uh, is a non-living thing. So, when we are assigning characteristics of human beings to inanimate objects, this is what we call personification and this is done to make the things relatable to human beings so that they can understand better. For example, as I climbed the stairs, the staircase groaned as if awoken from a long sleep. Now, the stairs are showing to have groaned. We know that stair is an inanimate object. So, personifying it with the human like quality, like groaning, is what we call a personification. So, stairs are being personified in this, uh, this sentence. You can read other examples by yourself and find out that word is creating the effect of personification. Now, let us talk about the arrangement of words. So, we know that arranging words in poetry is very important. So, the poet decides on how the words are arranged into a certain order or sequence to achieve a particular effect. The structure of the poem can also contribute to its overall meaning. Some words are used to identify the structure and arrangement of a poem and they are as follows. So, arranging words in an order and a sequence is very important and it leaves a particular effect. So, now we arrange words in poetry with verses and stanzas. A verse is one single line of a poem arranged in a metrical pattern. The pattern can be anything. There are a lot of different patterns in which you can arrange your verse. And a stanza is a group of verses where the lines are arranged into a unit and often repeated in the same pattern throughout the poem similar to a paragraph. So, group of verses, group of single lines, they make a stanza and a stanza is giving one complete idea, it is arranged into a unit and they also have a pattern. Poems are made up of multiple verses and stanzas and poets can make particular choices in the length and number of verses and stanzas for various purposes. So, my dear learners, if you have uh, read poems, you can see that some poems are having longer stanzas and some are having shorter stanzas and also the verses sometimes they are short containing four to five words and some they are, they are some uh, 
sometimes they are containing 10 words or more than 10 words. So this is how we arrange our words in poetry using the verse and the stanza. Now let's talk about the imagery of words. The image that the reader perceives in the mind that is actually deliberately written by the poet to create an image, produce an image in the mind of the reader. So words have images. Now let's explore this. Although poems explore deep human emotions or thoughts, an audience won't generally respond very strongly unless the poem creates imagery. Creating imagery is very important because the audience, the readers are not actually seeing the visuals. So in this way, they can picturize what is being conveyed to them. These are the vivid mental pictures or sensations created through descriptive words. Descriptive words and verbs in the purpose. The poet must include these details that calls upon the five senses in order to show the reader rather than to merely tell them about the subject. So, the imagery is actually not uh, only targeting the visual, it's also for your hearing, your all other senses. Now, here are some examples. Let's go through them together. The shimmering sun bounced waves of light off the surface of the ocean. So, this word shimmering and bounced waves, they are giving us a picture. We have seen the sun when it is shimmering. So, when we are reading such, uh, such verses in poetry, we can clearly imagine the intensity and the visual of the sun when it's shimmering. So, such uh, descriptive details and such words create an image in our mind. There are other examples that you can read and identify that how does the image and what word is giving you the image in your mind. Here is a simulation video that you can watch later after you have completed watching this lesson you will learn more about uh, the topic that we are discussing here is your classroom activity now this is your lesson of the poem you have to identify poetic devices in these stanzas Metaphors, similes, personification, alliteration, assonance, you can identify and look for when you uh, all of these if you can find them easily. So, this is your classroom activity, and for your worksheet, you have to evaluate the literary techniques and poetic devices given in the worksheet. This will be given to you by your instructor or your teacher to solve and this will put your understanding into practice. Now, for your homework, you have to read different poems and identify the poetic techniques from them. Write them in your notebooks with reference to the poems. So, after this homework, I would like to introduce some resources for your better understanding. All these resources are available in the description of the video. My dear learners, thank you for listening. I hope that now you are very clear about creating visuals, sounds, or music in poetry. And when you will be reading poems, you can easily identify the poetic techniques used by the poet that all of the, most of them we discussed here. There are a lot of others as well. Poetic techniques in terms of sound or music, arrangement of the words and the meaningful words that are used in poetry and also lastly we saw the imagery that the words produced in a poem so all of these things are very important and if you want to write any poetry any poem you can follow these steps to come up with a poem by yourself thank you for listening allah hafiz